Okay, everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to A Plus Parents. And this week, you know, I went out and I, I really wanted to be able to find homeschool success stories in the world, right? And so I started thinking, what would it be like to have a family and come and meet the mom and meet the kids? And uh, I know dad's not, he's not available to be part of this, or you get to meet dad too. But I went back and I started thinking about a family that I knew. And this family, the Kuykendall family, is actually really, really close to my heart because we've known each other for a really long time. And it's so uh, great to see them. You know, they're all grown up now and married and on college and out doing things. And so uh, I'm going to introduce the Kuykendall family to you and their mom, Joan. And so uh, the oldest is Anna, who's here and Aaron and David. And David actually is in college, but Anna and Aaron are now off and married and living their own life and, uh, you know, just doing amazing things. So first of all, you guys, you know, it's like, how many, how many different times did we try to get this scheduled, right? Because you guys are all so busy in your life and trying to like work it out and get you guys all here. So, so first of all, really thank you for allowing your schedules to work so we could all be here together at one time. So it's really great. So why don't we do this? Um, we'll have you guys each introduce yourself. So when you do just kind of tell us about, um, you know, obviously we can get your name, we can see your name on the screen as well, but tell us also about, um, where did you, you know, what'd you do in college and what you majored in and then what you're doing today. And then we're going to kind of dive back into the homeschool world and we'll, and we'll talk to your mom and get some of your mom's, uh, you know, what it looked like from what your view looked like and what mom's view looked like and see where there's a match and where there may be a mismatch. So we'll kind of get all that. So Anna as being the <laughs> oldest and ladies first, why don't you just tell us a little bit about you and what you're doing today in the world. Sweet. Well, I'm Anna. I'm the oldest of the three of us. And I went to Auburn University and studied nursing there. And I graduated a couple years ago. So I'm now an ER nurse. Um, right now I'm on a couple of travel contracts and close to where I live. I got married about seven months ago. So my husband and I live here in Auburn. And yeah, short snippet. That's awesome. And did you do homeschooling your whole entire, your whole entire life? Yes, until college? and graduation. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, good. Well, we're going to come back and find out more about that too. Aaron, how about you, my friend? Uh, hello, I'm I'm Aaron. I am the I'm the middle child of this family. Um, I also went to Auburn University. Um, I studied mechanical engineering and a business minor, and then I graduated this past spring, um, and I got a job for a forensic engineering company where we do accident reconstruction of vehicles that have gotten into car accidents. So it's pretty cool to work with like 3D animations and uh, really like cut the edge technology. Um, so that's nice. Um, I got married also in July. So that was like three months ago now. Um, yeah, life, life is good. I was also homeschooled the whole way through as like Anna and David as well. So that's a little bit about me. That's awesome. Okay, David, and you're the college student, right? So I am, yes, sir. Let me guess. I, uh, are you at Auburn University? <laughs> I am at Auburn University as well. I'm bringing up the tail end. Um, I am a sophomore in biosystems engineering at Auburn, and I also was homeschooled my entire school career. Um, and I currently uh, am just enjoying my major and I feel prepared for it because of homeschooling. That's awesome. Okay, Joan. So here you are, you got these three Auburn, you know, uh, well, one, two graduates and one in school. And, you know, one thing I know, and you'll have to share a little more about this, like these are all young people who, who not only have went to a major university, but got scholarships and so when oftentimes people talk about, you know, what it's like to be a homeschooler and that it's harder to get scholarships, but maybe not because here they all three are and they, you know, they all got uh, full scholarships to their to Auburn University, which is pretty amazing. So tell us a little bit about you, because I know you've got, you know, not only are you married and you homeschooled three kids now that are all, you know, grown adults and often doing their thing. But you also uh, you also have a pretty cool background in your own right in before you became a mom. I do. Um, I came to um, being a mom a little later in life, so I got to live a little life before I started my um, family adventure. Um, I 
don't practice now, but I'm a veterinarian and I did a large animal surgical residency at Auburn University where I met my husband, who's also a veterinarian. So um, I practiced for several years. I got married when I was 33 and um, started having kids when I was 36, started a little bit late. Um, when the kids were young, I was exposed to some homeschool families and I liked the fruits of what I saw. I enjoyed the children. I enjoyed how they learned. I enjoyed the families. And I said, well, this is kind of nice because prior to that, I was um, waiting for kindergarten so they could go to school. And then I was a stay-at-home mom at that time and I was gonna go back and be a part-time veterinarian. Um, with the exposure I had to other homeschool families, I said, you know, this um, might be an avenue that we want to try because we thought about private school. We weren't really interested in public school, to be honest. Um, and the private school we were interested in was um, basically was not available. Um, they had already filled their class. And so I said, well, let's try homeschooling for a year. And my husband and I prayed about it and said, okay. And so we, that's what we did for several years as we just each year decided, is this what we're gonna do? And we felt led to do it. Um, I am academically pretty tough with them. They would say, <laughs> um, because I had expectations of, I wanted to prepare them to the best of their ability. They're all, of course, I'm the mom, but they're all very bright, and I wanted them to be able to have choices when they were adults about what they wanted to do with their lives. So I wanted to academically prepare them. Um, I realized I did some research when they were starting high school um, and realized that the scores for ACT or SAT were really what determined the scholarship values for most of the major universities as well as private universities as most of the major public. And so I um, decided that we would work on making the magic ACT score of 33 is the draw <laughs> for Auburn. Uni well, actually it started at 31. It keeps going up because I guess kids keep getting smarter or better able to take the test. <laughs> but um, so we started with Anna and Anna, bless her, had the brunt of everything because she was the trial by fire where I could see um, how to teach. You know, we were in tears when I taught her how to read at four and a half and we were in tears in math in first grade. And by David, I figured it out a little bit better. So he reaped the benefits of that. But um, for me, I would say we did more, a lot more hands-on, probably kindergarten through eighth grade, where it was more home-based with some co-ops that were fun and, you know, do little labs and stuff. And then by the time we got to high school, we were more involved in homeschool co-ops that had like your course or had um, chemistry offered or had an English course. And then probably midway through high school, I realized that we have the opportunity in Florida to do dual enrollment and they do that in Alabama as well. And so I felt that as a homeschool mom, you're more of a manager in high school, I think, you know, honestly, you manage how your children what they take. And um, for my children, what I did is um, for Anna and for Aaron, I went through all the curriculums for what their programs would be. And I backed it up to see what we needed to take for college. And then we, um, once again, because I'm, academically a tyrant probably. I took um, Anna to Auburn University in eighth grade to talk to the nursing department to see what we needed to do. And then we went back in 10th grade. Um, she, and she started taking classes at the community college in 10th grade. And then Erin also did that in 10th grade. And then they also did that at Auburn when we came here, Anna was in 12th grade and Erin was in 11th grade. So I probably answered a little bit too much for you there. Not at all. No, that's awesome. So, it, and, it, and it's great because, you, you know, you're, you've kind of laid out, you know, when you were very hands-on when they were younger, and then when you were able to kind of step back and you know, have other people, you know, working with them. And uh, it, it's kind of funny. It's like you guys, when you came and started doing the math classes with me, it was like, I was, I was still 
getting my, you know, getting my own programs developed. And so, you know, so it's, which is so great that we're, you know, that able that we're all, we're all grown up. Right. So here we are. <laughs> so, okay. So Anna, so you're the oldest, right? Mm -hmm. So given that, that mom had to, you were the Guinea pig, you know, like you were always the oldest. So you were the first one to be a, you know, like a fourth grader. And then you were the first one to be a seventh grader and the first one to be in high school, you know, as you're in your family. So what did your typical day look like as a homeschooler? What would you say? Um, it very definitely throughout the stages when we were younger, um, mom did a very good job of providing structure. I think that was something that was helpful too, as far as definitely, like in the morning times, we weren't allowed to sleep in. I feel like people have this notion of homeschooling of like, oh, so you like go to your school in your PJs all day. I got asked that a lot growing up. But no, like we had a set time that we had to be awake by and chores. And we would normally eat breakfast together as a family. Um, and then we would have assignments and tasks that we had to complete. Normally not as much um, daily, but definitely weekly. We had goals that we had to meet. And so as a result, you had to work on them every day. But it was good because we were also pretty heavily involved in um, sports growing up so a lot of flexibility if we had a big game weekend then we would be able to work more on the front end of the week and get stuff done so that we would have less to do when we we're doing games versus if we had a show week we could spread it out a little bit more so the days kind of fluctuated as far as that but we had more strict kind of I guess goals to meet weekly as we got older we definitely got more of a school schedule once we started doing um like dual enrollment and co-ops and stuff I know I think it was like junior year I was taking a full load of college classes and almost a full load of high school classes so Tuesdays and Wednesday or Tuesdays and Thursdays Aaron and I would go to college together and take classes and we'd have classes for about nine to three we'd have four college classes on those days but then on Mondays we had a different co-op so we'd have the co-op from nine to four and then Wednesdays, we had another co-op where we took your classes there. And so we'd have classes there from, again, nine to three or nine to four. So Fridays became like our homework days because that was our only day we didn't have things. So it varied growing up, but it also allowed for it to kind of grow and stretch with us, which I think was beneficial. That's awesome. Well, obviously, it's beneficial because look at you today, right? You're <laughs> college grad, ER nurse. That's, that's totally awesome. Okay, so you you know you've you've kind of like the the academics are there. Moms really kind of looked at that, and you mentioned sports, right? Which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So you guys were involved in sports, and I, and I do remember that. So, Aaron, you you know you know one of the things that people talk about in homeschooling is how do you get to socialize? So here you guys are, super busy, doing co ops and going to college and doing all these things. So. What do you think, uh, you know, because you got into college and now here you are and you're married. So obviously you, you did good in asking somebody out on a date that honestly worked well, right? So how do you think homeschooling helped you prepare and, or be what you could say, like being properly socialized? Like, you know, like where, how do you feel like you can like participate, right? What was it, what was it, what was it like for you and your homeschool experience? Um, well, I feel like a lot of times people just have a misconception of what homeschooling is and think you're just like locked in a basement until the end of every day and that you haven't seen the sunlight mm -hmm. forever and you don't get to talk to people. But honestly, like, I mean, despite the fact that we were homeschooled, like talking about all these co-ops, like some of my like really good friends I met at these, like one of my like still really good friends, he was at my wedding um, and we talk like weekly usually, um, like I met at one of the co-ops. And so um, we made friends through those. And then we also made friends to our sports teams. I know all three of us played soccer growing up the whole way through. Well, basically like four until 18. So, um, and then uh, we did triathlons as well. So, I mean, we made friends from both of our sports teams. Um, and then we also made a lot of our friends through church because um, we did go to church on Sundays and Wednesdays growing up the whole way through. And so it wasn't like we had no exposure to other like people our age and just were sheltered inside of our home. We had like actual exposure to people outside of my two siblings and parents so um as a result of that we were able to develop um i feel like social habits despite not being in a, a real school so. yeah no that's awesome oh, that's awesome well and in some ways you you've got more opportunities because you did more than just going to a public school like you know you had co-op one day and you did two different co-ops so one co-op day there was a whole different group of young people another co-op day different group college a different group of people 
and you're playing soccer in a different group. So that's awesome. All right. So David, I, I got a question for you, right? Here you've got older brother, older sister, super successful, really smart. Mom and dad are both doctors. Come on, man. Was there any pressure on you to like step up? And, you know, as the youngest, did you have to, did you ever feel like it's like, oh my gosh, I got to like, I got to be amazing here, right? <laughs> uh, yes, there definitely was um, pressure, but I would never say it was like unreasonable pressure. It was always um, kind of an expectation for me to do my best. And my parents didn't care if that was, if my best was like, say a C in a class, they were like, okay, that's okay. If you're trying your best and working your hardest, that's what we want. So yes, there was pressure to succeed, but it wasn't really based on the comparison of my siblings. It was more like, okay, David, we know you can do this. We've seen what you can do. So this is what we expect because we know you can do this. We've seen you do this before. So the, the pressure or expectations were always just based off like what I could do, not what my siblings were doing. So of course I put pressure on myself to try to beat them or, or do as well as them in classes. Mm -hmm. But like, it wasn't like based off of my parents. Like they always pretty much supported me. Like regardless, as long as I was just doing my best, like if they saw that I was working as hard as I could, they were like, okay, that is what we want.